your Bible with you this morning. Open it up to Psalms, the 119th chapter. <clears throat> the longest chapter in the Bible. It contains 176 verses. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I call it the Word chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that's what it deals with. All the way through this chapter, it talks about the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not going to read all 176 verses this morning. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. But I am going to read several of them. And I wouldn't say they're the highlights of it because it's good from 1 through 176. But anyway, there are some that I wanted to share with you. It behoove all of us to read this chapter, not just once, but over Amen. and over and over again. Right. If you have any doubts of the importance of the Word of God, David did not have any doubts of the importance of the Word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So, let's look at some of the things it says here before we get into the meat of our message this morning. This, this uh, chapter deals with the Word of God, and you will find, if you read it, you will find that... It calls. It mentions precepts. It mentions laws, commandments, judgments, statutes, testimonies, truth, and more. And it's all talking about the Word of God. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. So, the first one we'll read is Psalms one nineteen and eleven. David said in the eleventh verse of this chapter, "Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin." against thee. Oh, that's powerful right there, isn't it? Amen. Amen. That's a sermon within itself, Brother Tyler. Amen. Right. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might Amen. not sin against thee. Amen. Right. Drop down to verse 16. It says, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will, for, I will not forget thy word. Amen. Hallelujah. Powerful. Yes. Drop down to verse 25. David would write, My soul cleaveth unto dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. Now you'll notice that throughout this chapter, and not just this chapter, but all of David's writings, at times you will find that he was between a rock and a hard place. Amen? All right. That he was in dire need of help. Right. And we always find him turning to the Lord right. for his strength. For his help. Amen. Right. And in this particular passage, he says, My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Yeah. Quicken thou me according. See what he turns to? He turns to the Lord. He turns yeah. to the word of the Lord. Verse 28 says, My soul melteth for heaviness. <laughs> I'm just going to give up. Lay some down somewhere and die. Is that what it says? That ain't what it says, is it? Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Amen? How many times have you heard people say, I'm just going to give up. I just quit. Yeah. I try and I try and it just doesn't do me any good so I'm just going to quit. We don't find David saying that here. Amen? We find him giving us an example of how to react in times of trouble in our life. Amen? He turns to the Word of God. Psalms 119 and 38. Let's look at the 38th verse there. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. Establish your word, Lord, in my life. Drop down to verse 42. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me. For I trust in thy word. What Jesus answered the devil with in the wilderness? The word. Amen? When the devil said... I'll do this or I'll let you do this or I'll make you to do this, Jesus would turn to him and say, it is written. Amen? Amen. That's really the only discourse we need to have with right. the enemy. Well, Amen? And we spend a lot of time talking to him. Well, we spend a lot of time using, trying to use a lot of fancy words to rebuke him. Yeah. But Jesus said, it is written. Yeah. Brother Dave, when he comes and tells you, just give up. These things are going to destroy you. All you have to do is say, all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Amen? Amen? He should get tired of hearing us say, it is written. Yeah. Amen? Come on. 
It hadn't been revised. <laughs> Amen. It's written in something stronger and more enduring than stone. Right. Amen. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I feel the preacher coming on. Hallelujah. Where do we get to? Drop down to verse. Drop down to verse 49. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. David's hope was in the Word. Right. Amen? Amen. Drop down to verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction. Yeah. For thy Word hath quickened me. Amen. Do you see a pattern here? And you won't just find it in the longest chapter of the Bible. You will find this throughout the Word of God. You will find this throughout David's writings. Amen? Come on. Verse 74. Drop down to verse 74. They that fear thee yeah. will be glad when they see me yeah. because I have hoped in thy word. Amen. Oh, are you following me this morning? Yes. Drop down to verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Right. Uh-oh. This ain't something that was birthed yesterday. Amen. This is not something that's going to go away tomorrow. Amen. Right. This is not some new fad. Mm -hmm. This is not some new thing that the church has introduced that will fizzle out in a few months. Come on. Thy word forever it is settled in heaven. Yeah. Drop down to verse 103. Verse 103 says, How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Oh, isn't that pretty? Amen. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. He's talking about the Word of God. When you're dry and when you're thirsty and when you feel alone, yeah. when you find comfort in the Word of God, it is like honey to your taste. Come on. Amen? It is like a cool, fresh drink of water in a barren wilderness. Amen? Right. <laughs> Drop down to verse 105. All of you know this one by heart. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. All right. Oh, hallelujah. Without it, we have no illumination. Right. Without it, we are on the road of darkness without any light whatsoever to right. shine the way home, to shine our direction and which way to go. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. How many people know that if you're on a path mm -hmm. and it's dark and you have no light, it's dangerous? Amen. Amen. True. If you can't see where you're going, you may walk off the side of a cliff. Right. You may fall into a pit. Right. Amen. You may step on a snake. But David said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It is a light unto my path. Hallelujah. A lamp unto my feet. It's a light so that I can see which way to go. Which way to turn. So that I can see how to stay on the right way. If you don't want to lose your way, Hold to the Word. Amen? Right. That's when people lose their way. Amen. When they let go of the Word. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. When they let go of the Word. Mm -hmm. That's when people lose their way and get lost. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's when people get deceived. Come on. It's whenever they don't go to the Word. Mm -hmm. right. Amen? Man's illumination not going to do you any good mm -hmm. if it doesn't come from the book. Amen? If it doesn't come from the Word. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Drop down to verse 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. Ooh. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Come on. Did you hear that this morning? Yeah. The entrance of thy word giveth light. Right. Have you ever opened a dark room and took a light in there with you? It illuminates things. Right. That's what David is saying. He already told us that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now he says the entrance. When your word enters, yeah. oh, hallelujah, the entrance of thy words giveth light. Amen. It giveth understanding unto the simple. We cannot have understanding. Right. Our thinking, our way, of, our, our knowledge cannot be enlightened this morning without the word of God. Amen. You can be the smartest professor. You can have all the degrees that man has to offer hanging on your walls this morning. Amen? Wow. But unless God's Word has illuminated that, that's really darkness to you. Knowledge can become a stumbling block. 
Uh -huh. Knowledge can become darkness to you. Because you can bring yourself to the point where you have to understand it. You have to work it all out or you can't believe it. But when God's Word is illuminating, when God's Word is the lamp to your feet, whenever it's the light into your path, amen, then the simple can begin to understand the things of God. Right. Drop down to 140. Thy Word is very pure. Therefore thy servant loveth it. Amen. Oh, isn't that powerful this morning? Verse 40, 147. Drop down to 147. I prevented the dawning of the morning and I cried and cried. I hoped in thy word. That word hope means I leaned on it. I trusted it. I waited on it. I carried on it. I stayed on it. Oh, my, my, my. I hoped in thy word. The last one that we're going to look at in this chapter, 160. Verse 160. Thy word is true from the beginning. Thy word is true from the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. I want to talk to you this morning for a minute or two using the subject I hoped in thy word. Brother Dave has already talked about Sister Martine a little bit this morning. I'd like to do the same. We went over there early Thursday morning for the visitation. Sister Martine was a dear friend of mine. She had been a partner of this ministry for several years. And every month she would write me two and three, four page letters sometimes. And even after she... And when in the beginning... She would ask me to please pray for her children. Even whenever she found out she had cancer. Yeah. The plea that she had the most in her letters were please, please pray for my children, my grandchildren. Amen. It wasn't four letters of gloom. It wasn't four pages of gloom, despair, and I'm dying and agony on me. It was please keep remembering my family. Please keep remembering my Children. Amen? Yeah. So as we walked up to the casket there, and I looked down at my dear friend who I didn't go there to tell her goodbye. She wasn't there. Amen? Amen. Her old shell that she used here in this life that embodied the real her yeah. was there. Come on. I had sat at her bedside about two weeks before that, a little less than two weeks before that, and told her goodbye. Yeah. Amen? As we sat there and talked about the Lord and talked about the Word and Talked about the things that God had done in her life. So I'd already told my friend goodbye. But this would be the last time that I would see her, her body on this side of the river anyway. And as I walked up there and I looked down in that casket, Brother Dave, I saw something <laughs> that I still today cannot explain to you. The feeling that came over me. All right. There in her little aged weathered hands was her Bible. Yeah. And it wasn't, it didn't look like this one. This just looks sort of new since the electronic boom and everything. I use the computer and the laptop and different things like that more than I do the actual copy of it. I've got one somewhere that Brother Tyler can tell you is falling apart because before the computers came along, I wore her out. Amen? Yeah. I just couldn't find it to bring with me this morning. All right. But as I looked down into that casket, I seen her old King James yeah. with her hands folded around it. Amen. And Brother David, it was, did y'all see it whenever y'all were over there? I don't know if it was still in the casket or not. Yeah. It was taped together with duct tape. Yeah. From where it had been used so much that it was falling apart. Right. The edges of it were, were, were bent and they were, they, they were worn and the pages looked like they, were, they had seen better days. Amen. Right. And there was duct tape across the top and duct tape around the bottom here yeah. to hold it together. Amen. Come on. And I can't tell you what that did for me. Yeah. Amen. I had tears in my eyes and joy in my heart. Amen. Yeah. As I, I almost felt like running across the front of the, the funeral parlor there and saying, Glory to God, she's made it home. Amen. Amen. But as I looked down at that casket and I saw this old weather worn, battle weary book mm. that this sister held in her hands. Amen. There are no words to describe the feeling that I had then.
right. and the feeling that I had this morning right. as I look back on it. Amen. Right. And I thought of the words of this song that I've recorded and we've sung a time or two, not nearly enough, I don't guess. And it's about a man's daddy, but the words still apply to what I'm talking about this morning. The words written by Billy Fields say this, My dad was held together by a book falling apart. <laughs> Amen. My dad was held together by a book falling apart. You can trace the tear-stained pages where it held when times were dark. Did you hear what I said this morning? Amen. My dad was held together by a book falling apart. Right. You can trace the tears. And all that I can just imagine mm. that you can trace the tears stained pages mm. in Sister Martine's Bible where it held when times were dark. Amen. Right. Oh, somebody help me this morning. As I stood there, I wondered, Brother Sleeson, how many sleepless nights she had turned to that old weather-worn book. Amen. I wondered, uh, Brother Dave, how many times of hopelessness she had turned to that old Bible. Amen. I wondered how many times uh, when she needed strength, uh, she had leaned on it. When she needed healing, uh, she had turned to it. Uh, when she needed encouragement, she had opened the pages of the old book. Uh, when she needed reminding of His promises, uh, when it seemed like there was no hope, uh, and she needed to hear to read His promises one more time. When it seemed like she was going down for the count and she needed to know that all things work together for my good. I know it don't look good. I know it don't look like it's going to happen. But I know God's word says it. And I've built my life on it. I've staked my soul on it. I'm standing on it today. I'm trusting in its promises today. I wondered how many midnights she had set up and burnt the midnight oil reading the old book and the promises of God. Amen. I wondered how many times she had turned to it. Whatever it seemed like there was nobody else to turn to. Hallelujah. Come on, tell it. I wondered how many times, and I dropped my notes. I wondered how many times she had turned to it. Amen. How many times when it seemed dark she had turned to it for light. Amen. I wondered. How many times she had turned and read the words that Brother Dave sang this morning? Mm -hmm. They that wait upon the Lord yeah. shall renew. I wonder how many times of weakness Amen. she read those words. They that wait upon the Lord yeah. shall renew their strength. That, oh, my, my, my. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They shall walk. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I wondered how many times she had turned to that old book for help. Yes. For encouragement, for Amen. hope. Amen. Thank God. You see, listen to me this morning. When the shout is gone, when the shout is not there, Come on. His Word will be. Right. Amen. Right. When the feeling is not there. True. You ever been there before? Yes. You ever been there whenever the feeling wasn't there? Amen. You didn't feel Him. You didn't see Him. You didn't smell Him. You didn't taste Him. You th as far as your carnal man was concerned, you could say He was a million miles away, but you knew He wasn't because He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I'll go with you all the way. Amen. Hallelujah. I wondered how many times when she felt like she was alone, she turned to that old promise, I am with you always. I am with you always. I am with you always. I wondered how many times when she needed peace, she read the old promise that says, I'm going to give you peace. Not like the world gives you peace, but I'm going to give you peace that passes all understanding. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you see, with the emotions and the hype of jumping the pews, and don't get me wrong, that didn't come out right. I love to jump the pews. Amen. And I believe when you feel the Spirit, you feel like you can run through a troop and leap over the wall and you'll dance like David did. Amen. Right. Some people will. Come on. I have nothing against that. Right. But when the dance is gone, yeah. when the shout is gone, yeah. when the feeling is gone, on, when it seems like it's dark and there is no light, right. amen, God's oh. Word. God's Word will be there. God's Word is forever settled in heaven. God's Word is from the beginning and will be there throughout all of eternity. Amen. Because when you're on your deathbed, 
Yeah. Eat up by cancer. Right. You don't feel like jumping no pew. Yeah, really? Amen. Right. You don't feel like running through a troop and leaping over a wall. Yeah, right. Amen. Come on. But you can clean to the promises of God. Yeah. You can lean on His Word. Right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can lean on His Word. Oh, I hope you're getting something this morning. Praise the Lord. It's no coincidence uh -huh. that Granny's Bible was falling apart, but she wasn't. All right. Yeah. Come on, oh, how did you hear what I said this morning? It was no coincidence yeah. that Granny's Bible was falling apart, oh. but Granny's life wasn't. Amen. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, she made it through the Great Depression. Yeah. Amen. Right. Yeah. Why? Because her peace didn't come from a bottle. Her peace came from a Bible. Her hope didn't come from a bottle. Her peace came from her hope came from a Bible. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You see, the old states made it through the Great Depression. Today, this generation thinks that the Great Depression is the way that they feel when McDonald's runs out of ground beef. Amen. They don't know what it's like to not know where your next meal's coming from. Right. Amen. But to turn to the Word. Yeah. And read where I've never seen the righteous forsaken Amen. or God's seed begging for bread. Amen. Amen. Oh, I wish somebody help me this morning. They don't know what it's like. Amen. To not know where the next thing. Where, where, uh, have a roof over your head. Well, some of them do. Some of them are homeless. But for the majority of people in America, they don't know what it's like. Amen. Whenever we had the ice storm, people thought the world had came to an end because we didn't have no electricity. But then during the Great Depression, you would have killed you. Amen. You wouldn't have been able to make it through. But they made it through. Why? Because they were standing on the promises of God. Amen. They were holding on to the Word of God. They were like David whenever he felt like his soul was turning to dust when he cleaved to the dust. And it seemed like the tears had covered his couch. Hallelujah. See, Granny knew that times was dark and things wasn't real good, but she knew that joy comes in the morning. Amen. Because the Word of God says it. And she lived it. She ate it. She fed upon it. She had it written on the tables of her heart. Amen. That's the truth. She was holding to the Word of God. Oh, preach. Amen. Preach it. The Word saw them through. Yes, sir. I got news for you. Come on. It'll see you through today. That's right, brother. It'll see you through today. That's right. Times have changed. Yeah. People have changed. Come on. God's Word remains, remains the, same. the same. Amen. I know man has tried to change it. Right. I know man has changed it to some degree. Come on. Amen. And I'm talking about the written word that we have up here. Yes, sir. A lot of people decided it wasn't good enough. They had to revise it. Right. Amen. But God's word is eternal. Yes, sir. It is everlasting. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. Jesus Christ, the word that became flesh. Yes. Amen. Come on. God's word is forever settled yes, sir. in heaven. Amen. Amen. True. And we hear so much Amen. today of people who say, I've written a book. Yeah. And it'll change your life. Mm. Buy my book, $29.95. Get it at Amazon.com. It'll change your life. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. I don't know about their book. Mm. I think I do. But in order to not offend you, I'm not going to tell you what I think about their book. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I've got a book today Amen. that'll change your life. It's changed millions upon millions upon millions of lives. Amen. The Word of God has saw men through lion's dens. The Word of God has brought men out of fiery furnaces and they didn't even smell like smoke. Amen. The Word of God caused a man by the name of Abraham to get up out of a country that he knew and where his loved ones were at and to go out and to seek a place he never heard of, never seen before, but the whose builder and maker was God. Amen. The Word of God is everlasting. Hold on to it, Brother Tyler. Don't let anybody tell you that you what you got ain't real. Don't let anybody tell you that what you got is a fable. Don't let anybody tell you that what you got ain't truth. Hold on to the Word of God yeah. with all you got. Let it be your anchor. Let it be your sword. Let it be your shield. Yes. Amen. Amen. It'll see you through. Come on. Amen. Come on. It'll see you through. Amen. Just like it saw them through. Right. Just like it saw Sister Martine through. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> see, their Bible wasn't somewhere saving their seat. Yeah. At church. Amen. It was by the old rocking chair. Right. It was by the old fireplace. Yeah. It was beside of their bed. Amen. Right. And it didn't look like it just came off the shelf at the bookstore either. Right. Amen. It was worn. It was battered. It was torn. It was tattered. Amen. Exactly. You see, I get concerned 
today about the generation of church people that we have. Yes, sir. I get concerned because a lot of times people will say, wow, what a service we had last night. Mm -hmm. It was so good, we didn't even have to preach. Yeah. Mm. We'll be here seven years next month. Yeah. And other than when Brother Carter was here, it probably happened, but I don't know. You can count on one hand the times we don't preach. Right. And you know why that is. Amen. Because it ain't in the shout. Right. The shout ain't what's going to see you through. Amen. Because sooner or later you ain't going to feel like shouting. Right. Amen. True. Amen. The hoop, the holler, and the jump, the pew, and the leap over the wall ain't going to see you through. Exactly. Because sooner or later you ain't going to feel like hooping, holler, and jump over the pew. Amen. The word is what's going to see you through. The Word is what's going to keep you from being deceived. The Word is what's going to cause your faith to grow. Amen? Oh, Say, Brother Brother, what in the world does the Word have to do with my faith? The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen? It causes your faith to grow. So I get concerned about a generation that thinks the service was so great. And listen, I'm not saying it don't happen in a, in a rare thing. But I'm talking about people who talk like it's, it's it's a rare thing for them to preach. Come on, Amen. True. It's a rare thing, but for them to preach, right? They've got their eyes so much on the power of the Holy Ghost and the moving of the gifts of the Spirit mm. that they've left out the Word of God. Right. Amen. True. So they'll, it, it, like I said, I know that it happens. I'm not saying that if you're out there and it's happened and you've done it that it was a sin or nothing. I'm not telling you. I'm telling you, it concerns me. When we find church after church that have very little preaching of the Word of God anymore. Amen? Right. Very little preaching of the Word of God anymore. Amen. Sometimes it's because the pastor ain't spent no time studying. He don't really have no Word, so he's hoping that everybody gets so crazy and worked up and falling around that, hey, I don't have to preach today. I feel like God's already moved. All right. Amen? And I ain't saying that'll never happen. I'm telling you, it don't happen all the time. Amen. God wants His people to have the Word of God. Right. Amen? And i tell you where that leads you. It leads you into some kind of fanatical deception. If you alienate the Word of God, if you stray from the Word of God, it leads you into some of the things that we've seen from the modern day charismatic church as we know it today. With the uncontrollable things. And the complete emotional. Say, we, brother, we had a service last night. People jumped, they screamed, they hollered, they shouted, they ran. Yeah. They did that at the rock concert too. Well, sure. Amen. Yeah. They did that at the rock concert right. too. So that don't necessarily mean that you're on the right track. Right. Amen. I'm telling you, if you stray from the Word of God, you're fixing to miss out. You're fixing Amen. to miss it. Amen. Right. Because it's His Word. True. In times of darkness and loss of hope, it's His Word exactly. that you need to be anchored in, that you need to hold on to. Yeah. Amen. Right. A life being held together by a book that is falling apart. Amen. Amen. Held together by the words and the promises of this old book that I hold in my hand today. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And this book becomes way more than just a collection on your bookshelf. It becomes a part of you. Mm -hmm. David said it's in my heart. Mm -hmm. I've hid it in my heart. Amen. There may come a time where we can't pack this around because they've hunted them all down and burned them. Amen. But that True. don't destroy the Word of God. Right. They tried that. True. They gathered up all the Bibles they could and burned them all, amen, in different places around the world. They tried that. Right. Amen. When William Tyndale was trying to uh, put the, the uh, Word of God in English language so that we would be able to read. They tried that. Right. They killed William Tyndale. We've still got the Word. Amen. They burnt the books. We've still got the Amen. Word. They killed men before Him. We've still got the Word. Amen. Amen. You can take away the Bible. You can burn it. You can tear the pages all apart. Amen. But you can't take away Jesus, the Word of God that is written on the tables of my heart. Amen. Amen. It would be whoever one of us, while we have the freedom, while we have the opportunity, while we have the chance to feed upon the Word of God and get it written upon the tables of our heart so that when they do take the book, if they do... The Word will still live on inside of us. Yes, sir. Amen. Preach on, brother. Oh, I guarantee you, 
Sister Martine didn't have to have the book to tell you about Jesus. Because when you fed up on it, yeah. when it becomes a part of you, it becomes a part of your nature. It becomes a part of your walk. It becomes a part of the way you talk. It becomes a part of you. Amen? Come on. Uh, Come on, pray. My goodness. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You see... Maybe by the time I go through some of these points, and I'm trying to hurry, I don't know how long I've been preaching. I don't want to hold you all day. But maybe by the time that I'm through talking about this, then those of you out there that don't understand why we take such a strong stand for the Word of God, for the King James Version, as we do. Because if we really believe that this is the closest thing that we have today to the original, closest thing that we have to the Word of Almighty God. And we do. We do believe that. So maybe you can understand why it bothers us when you begin to change what we believe to be the Word of God. Amen? Come on. Come on. Why, Brother Billy? Because that means whenever you begin to take away from the Word of God, God. you begin to take away from our life. Yeah. Because Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That means that when you begin to take away from this book, from the Word of God, you take away from our light. Why? Because of the scripture we read by David this morning that said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You begin to dim the light. Amen? You begin to, to smother out the light when you begin to take away from the book the words that we believe was given to us, preserved for us from God Almighty Himself. Amen? And delivered to us. Now listen, I'm not going to condemn you to hell. If you're reading something other than the King James. Amen. I'm just going to tell you that we believe that you have less than what God wants you to have. Because you have less than the original. You have something that has been changed and watered down. Amen. That is why we take the stand that we take today. That is, if it's, I've been accused of being legalistic on this. I'm not legalistic on this. I'm just protective of what I believe to be the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I'm just defensive against attacks on what I believe to be the Word of God this morning. Amen. So when you begin to take away from it, right. you begin to take away from our armor. Yes, sir. Our shield that quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. Come on, our faith. Amen. Right. Over there where you read about taking on the whole armor of God. It's in Romans 10. You don't have to go there. I, 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 it's in Romans, the 6th chapter. I'm sorry. You don't have to go there. I'm going to read it to you real quick. All right. You can go there if you want to. Romans 6 and 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now, surely you believe we're in the evil day. Amen. Amen. Really? And I know it's going to get worse. Right. But whenever you have every ungodly sin imaginable yeah. marching down the streets of our city, with flags and t-shirts on and flaunting their sin in the face of God and calling God everything, amen, and cussing in His face. Surely you believe if we're not in the evil day, Brother Dave, we're getting close to being in the evil day, amen? Amen. We're there. So put on the whole armor of God. Exactly. That you may be able to withstand the evil day. Yeah. Stand therefore. Listen, having your loins girt about with truth. Now what is truth? The Bible says His Word is truth. Thy Word is truth. Amen? Having your loins girt about with truth. Having on the... And there's a whole sermon right in that. Yes, sir. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen? Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Where do we get the gospel from? We get that from His Word. Amen? Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. Why is there such an attack on the Word of God? Because if He can take away from that, He can take away from your armor. And if He can take away from your armor, the easier it is for Him to attack you. Amen? Amen? The kind of armor it's talking about, we don't use that so much in the day that we live, although our men and women in the military do have defensive things. Right. But then they had to have a shield. They had to have a breastplate.
to protect their heart and for their, their vital organs. Amen? Yeah. So they had, they had to have a shield to go out for them to knock off the darts, the arrows, the things that the enemy would throw at them. If the enemy can take away your shield, right. if the enemy can take away parts of your armor, yeah. he can leave parts of you that are vulnerable. Amen. That he can attack. Amen. If he can take away your helmet, he can. If he can take away the word, see, the, he can take away the, the protection of your mind. He can pick. He, he, he can. He can plant seeds of deception in your mind because you're not rooted and grounded in the word of God. You don't have God's word as a defense shield against the enemy. That's why Jesus, when the devil came to him and came to tempt him in the wilderness, he raised up his shield and said, "In." It is written. Amen. That's why he had his mind girt about with the truth. Amen. That's the weapon that he used against the enemy. And if the enemy can take from the truth, he takes from your weapon. He weakens your arsenal. He weakens your defense shield. Amen. We're talking about how important the Word of God is today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He can take away from your foundation. Listen to me. He can take away. If he begins to chip away at the Word of God, in essence, he is chipping away at your foundation. Right. Yeah. True. And if the foundation is ruined, uh -huh. the, the whole place crumbles. Right. It'll collapse. Right. We were thinking about buying an old house in Livermore about 20, 27 years ago, I guess, 26. And somebody came out and they crawled up underneath there to check the foundation. <laughs> and they said, well, it don't look too bad except for the fact that it's sliding off the hill down toward the road. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> So if something's wrong, and that's why they had people check the foundation for termites. Right. Because if and that's what the devil, that's what the devil and his minions really are. They're just termites. Amen. Right. They eating away and eating away and eating away, trying to steal your faith, Amen. trying to steal your joy, trying to steal your peace. But if he can destroy the foundation, right, he can cause your entire structure to crumble. Right. So that's why we get so defensive for the word of God. Amen. That's why we're not so ready. To receive everything that someone offers that has Holy Bible stamped on the spine of it. Yes, Amen. Sir. That's why we have staked our life that this is the Word of God. Exactly. This is the closest thing that we have. Absolutely. And when you begin to take away from His Word, uh -huh. you begin to take away from our foundation, from our peace. Amen. Amen. That's from true. our defense shield. Amen. Yes. Taken okay. away a little bit. A little. I found this poem. On the internet, I want to share with you. <clears throat> if I can find it, I turned my notes upside down a while ago. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know I talked to you that that uh, it, it takes, you know, from our shield. Uh -huh. Psalms 91 and 4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Yes. Amen. Come on. See, I told you. When he starts taking away, he starts taking away from your armor. Right. Amen. Oh, oh, I'm telling you today, in a world that is so fast-paced, mm -hmm. in a world that it seems like nothing stays the same, right. everybody's changing, yeah. everything is changing, yeah. I want to point you to something today that will never change. Amen. I want to point you to something today that is the same right. as it's always God. been and it'll always be the same. Yeah. When it seems like there's no foundation to stand on, there's nothing oh. solid to grab a hold of, oh. I want to stand here today and proclaim to you across the airways of radio and across the internet and across video, CD, cassette, however you get it. I want to proclaim to you today to you there is a foundation that you can stand on. There is an anchor that you can hold on to, Brother Dave. It's the Word of Almighty God. It has been tried in the furnace of fire. It is solid. It is a sure foundation. Amen. It has been preserved from generation to generation. It has been given to us as to hold on to in these last and final days. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I feel like I could run through a troop and leap over the wall. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the old book that's fallen apart that will hold me together. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Praise God. Oh, my. Praise God. It'll keep you. Yeah. It'll keep you. Yes, sir. Amen. It's the only way you're going to keep from being deceived today yeah. is Come to on. know the Word of God for yourself. Come on. Amen. Amen. And in these last days, the spirit of deception is greater than it's ever been before. Yes, sir. So I want to encourage you. I want you to grab a hold of it. Come on. Amen. I want you to grab onto something that's faithful, true, Amen. and forever. Amen. That'll get you through the bad times. Right. That when the shout ain't there, Come 
And it seems like that everything, Brother Rodney, is going to destroy you. Yeah. You can turn to it. Amen. And it'll whisper these words to you. No weapon that is formed oh, against yeah. you shall, shall prosper. prosper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. hallelujah. Right. Even whenever you're on your deathbed, yeah. you can cling to the words of the Apostle Paul that yeah. said, Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah. To live is for Christ, but to die is gain. Amen. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I'm a winner either way. Hallelujah. Because I'm trusting His Word. I'm trusting His Word. I'm trusting His Praise Word. Praise the Lord. Oh my, my, my. Can you get a hold of that today? Can you get a hold of it? Can you hold on to it? You need an anchor in this day when the winds of sorrow and trouble are threatening and blowing. You need something to stand on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A foundation that is not going to be shaken. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen. Come on, say it. Brother. The same Amen. yesterday, today, Come on. and forever. Come on. See if you can grab a hold of these few little words. I don't know who wrote it. All efforts to destroy are in vain. God's holy word will still remain. So hammer on, ye hostile hands. Your hammers break. God's anvil stands. Hey, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. They put it in the fire and it's been, it came out pure as gold. Oh, hallelujah. They tried to destroy it. And the only thing they did was make it bigger. Amen. Hallelujah. They tried to exile it on the Isle of Patmos. And the only thing they did was cause a man to have the greatest revelation of Jesus Christ ever and to be shared across the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Wow. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Praise God. I have a companion of infinite worth. Mm -hmm. We travel together through this dreary earth. <clears throat> from pilgrimage here to home in the sky, we're traveling together, my Bible and I. All right. I have a companion a wonderful guide, mm -hmm. a solace and comfort, whatever betide. Oh. A friend never failing when others pass by. Come on. Oh, blessed communion, my Bible and I. Praise God. I have a companion, tis God's holy word. Yeah. Revealing from heaven the mind of my Lord. My rock and my refuge, when danger is nigh. We've blessing eternal, my Bible and I. Praise I have a companion, a heavenly light, a pillar by day and a fire by night. Amen. <laughs> oh, my. It'll be your pillar by day Amen. and your fire by night. It'll Amen. lead you. Amen. Come on. When the people came up out of the land of Egypt, he said, you follow the pillar by day and the cloud by night, and it'll lead you in the right direction. I'm telling you, if you'll follow the word, it'll lead you to the right direction. Amen. Almost done. I promise. I have a companion, a heavenly light, a pillar by day and a fire by night, a lamp from cradle until I shall die. What blessed communion, my Bible and I. Right. I have a companion, a dear faithful friend, a unique of blessing that shall never, a union of blessing that shall never end. Right. Till Jesus returns with His saints from on high, we'll travel together, my Bible and I. O light of my pathway, thou lamp to my feet. Come on. O manna from heaven, so precious and sweet. Exactly. For thee do I live, and for thee would I die. Amen. Forever and ever, my Bible and I. Hold on to it. It'll Amen. see you through. Yes, sir. Cling to it. Stand Guaranteed. on it. It's His Word. It's His promise. Absolutely. Someone else have something this morning before we go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.